breaking right now at six. Two men hospitalized in a shooting early this morning in Hartford's South End. Fox H1's Brooke Griffin is at the scene with the latest. We've got breaking news right now overseas. A passenger jet burst into flames on a runway in Japan with hundreds of people on board. We've got new information coming in about what may have caused that fire. And firefighters battling a massive fire in Waterbury. The heat so strong, other buildings also damaged. What we know from investigators so far this morning. And what you need to know ahead of the redo of the Democratic mayoral primary in Bridgeport. There's also a deadline today regarding the 2024 presidential race. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good morning. Thanks so much for choosing us here at 6 o'clock. I'm Eric Arias. And I'm Tim Lammers. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Back at it. Back to work and back to school for a lot of you. How's yes. that weather out there? <laughs> Matt Scott, it's Kids are not going to be used to getting out there on the bus stop in time. Oh, oh, if it was 70 degrees, they'd still not be used to it. <laughs> right. <True. laughs> good morning. It's hey, going to be a tough New one Year. all around. Right, exactly. Happy New Year, Eric. Nice to have you back. Uh, Tim, good morning. Good morning to you. Here's what you need to know before you go. It's clear now. As a result, it's a little chilly at the bus stop this morning, but we have lots of sunshine all day long. Despite the morning chill, mild temperatures over the next couple of days. In the seven day, one storm misses another one though maybe some trouble towards the end of the weekend we'll talk about that coming up we're clear across the board very light wind out of the north taking just a degree or two off for the wind chill that said the numbers itself are pretty low 20 degrees in Windsor Locks Wilmanic 24 in Hartford the warm spot right now New Haven at 27 degrees again a fairly light wind coming out of the north but any wind is going to drop that down for some of you into the teens dress accordingly this morning lots of sunshine though on tap first time in ages that we have wall-to-wall -wall sunshine to talk about that's a nice change of pace isn't it we'll talk about the uh, rest of the week talk about that incoming uh, potential issue for the weekend that's coming up in a bit Rachel Piscatelli first time I've seen you in what seems to be like months I know it feels like we right. have just been strangers we'll Matt, we'll so just, it's good to see you we're little my name is Matt I know, Rachel we'll I know. Get we have a lot to catch up on <laughs> all right good, good morning. morning 602 right now good to see you welcome back uh, things are um, looking pretty good across the board here 91 95 84 all looking smooth this morning. We'll take a live look outside over in New Haven. We don't have any road work to talk about this morning either. And uh, we're taking a live look outside over in Long Wharf. Now your Hartford drive times look good. New Britain out to the Hartford Tunnel. It's a nice five minute drive and we'll take a look at New Haven drive times, even New Haven to Bridgeport. Although it says travel speeds are around 46 miles per hour. That's a minor delay. It's going to take you just under a half hour drive. Tim and Erica, back to you. Hi, Rachel, thank you. All right, we are following that breaking news we mentioned a few minutes ago. Coming out of Hartford, two people are hurt in a shooting on Franklin Avenue. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin is live at the scene with information from police. Brooke, what can you tell us at this hour? Well, we already have quite a bit of information from police, but right now, before we end up losing this, I do want to show you this is one of the cars that's involved in this scene. Now, originally, police thought that maybe a car just crashed into Tico's place here on Franklin Avenue. But as you can see on the drive or the passenger side, excuse me, there's several bullet holes that have gone into this car. It looks like there might be some on the front windshield as well. We are still trying to wait for that car to get flipped around so we can see that for sure. But I've counted at least five different bullet holes that have gone into this car that ended up crashing into Tico's place here on Franklin Avenue. But really all of this started just before one o'clock when shot spotters in this area of Bliss Street and Franklin started alerting the police officers that numerous rounds had been fired. Now this was some of them that they were hearing there. They tell us when they arrived on scene, the officers first saw this car that had crashed into this front porch of Tico's place. But at a closer look, a man in his 20s was sitting in the driver's seat and he appeared to be suffering from gunshot wounds. They tell us he was taken to the hospital with critical injuries. Investigators tell us that driver was likely shot while he was already inside his car and then he crashed here into the front porch area of Tico's place as he was trying to get away. Now if we actually want to pan over to the left, it looks like he may have hit a sign and snapped a tree in half as well. That kind of looks like the path that this car took as he was shot and then it crashed. Now police say while they were investigating, they also learned that a 19 year old man had shown up at a local 
Medical Hospital with gunshot wounds. It was determined that he was also shot here at this scene on Franklin Avenue. Officers tell us that he is expected to be okay. Right now, there is no suspect in custody. So if you do have any information, maybe you have a ring camera in this area, you just happen to be out and about in this area of Franklin Avenue around 1 o'clock this morning, go ahead and call police if you have any information. They are trying to get a suspect, get somebody into custody for shooting both of those men. And right now, it looks like everything on Franklin is moving smoothly traffic-wise. They have just recently opened this up. But if you are coming within the next few minutes, just kind of be aware that there are still a couple first responders in this area. Live in Hartford, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's News Station. All right, Brooke, thank you for that report. Now at 6.05, let's get you to that other big breaking news story we've been following all morning. A huge fire on a passenger plane at one of Japan's busiest airports. Yeah, we're hearing the plane caught fire after being hit by a Japanese Coast Guard plane. Oh, we're checking in with Fox News Keith Bielbury. He is following this very closely and has some new details. Keith. Eric and Tim, some significant new information since I first brought you this breaking news earlier this morning, but give yourself a look at this video here. This video from the Haneda Airport in Tokyo, a Japan, a Japan Airlines plane just bursting into flames. At one point, you could see the front of the cockpit here, but all of those windows uh, and that flame entirely engulfed, and we are learning that the plane burst into flames while taxiing on the runway. Now we're getting information that a Japanese Coast Guard aircraft collided with a passenger plane here. The Coast Guard pilot evacuated the plane, but the other five crew members are still unaccounted for here as you take a live look at the airport here at 6.06 our time. The passenger plane reportedly had about 400 people on board. Somehow, according to Japanese public broadcasting, we're learning that all of those passengers got out of the plane safely. We do not have any word uh, when it comes to injuries potentially on the ground as this effort very much continues to unfold here. The fire appeared to center by the wing. It seemed like firefighters at one point had some of this under control and then that fire picking back up just engulfing the entire flame, uh, in t the entire plane rather, in flames. And again, the new details now are that a Japanese Coast Guard plane made contact with that passenger plane. We do not know where the Coast Guard plane is now. The pilot did get out of that plane, but five members of the crew still unaccounted for. But again, Tim and Erica, this is the scene we have been seeing over the better part of this morning when we brought this to you as breaking news at 4 a.m., a situation that is continuing to unfold. I'm going to jump back into the newsroom, check with some of our sources, and if I learn anything new, I will bring that to you. But for now, live in the studio this morning, I'm Keith McGilvery, Fox 61, Connecticut's News Station. Wow, the video is just incredible. Yeah. Kate, thanks so much for the update there. All right, well, meantime this morning, fire crews are expected to return to the scene of a massive house fire to try to figure out how this started. All these pictures show the flames that firefighters saw when they responded to Crown Street at about 830 last night. This is in Waterbury. The fire inside of a three story home that was vacant there. Firefighters say the heat was so intense, the siding on the building across the street began to melt. And here's a look at the aftermath of the fire. The home where the fire started has been charred. Now we're told there is some damage to a neighboring home as well, where fire began to spread toward the attic. Thankfully, no one was hurt because the vacant home had so much damage. Firefighters did not even try to go into it. Investigators tell us that they are going to go back to the home later today. When it's daylight, it will make things easier to see. Well, today is the deadline for voters who are already registered with a political party to switch their party affiliation if they want to. That's ahead of the 2024 presidential primary. Now, if you want to do this, you do have to visit your local registrar of voters. If you're not registered to vote or if you're unaffiliated, you have until March to register with a party. Today, voters in Bridgeport can get absentee ballots for the city's redo of its Democratic mayoral primary. On Friday, voters were able to request applications for those ballots. Now, that redo will be held on January 23rd. And uh, four days before that, January 19th, that is the last day to register to vote for that Democratic primary. Well, this morning in East Haddam, state police are searching for whoever broke into at least 25 cars there, including a police cruiser. This happening on Saturday. State police got multiple calls about thefts from cars, and they tell us that the thieves also forced their way into a locked police cruiser. Investigators say that the alleged thieves may have been riding around town in a white Subaru. If you have any information about these break-ins, please call police. 
And Guilford police say burglars broke into several vehicles across town over the weekend. One happened at a gas station while the owner was pumping gas. Now this is the car that police say the thieves were in. It's a Honda Civic with stolen license plates. The other thefts happened at the Sam Hill Road and Bluff Heads Trail. Now police say the thieves smashed their way into locked cars where purses and wallets were in plain view. And officers in Plainville are looking for two people after the town's middle school soccer and softball fields were both damaged. A witness told police that two teenage boys tore up the fields with quads on New Year's Eve. Now we're told one quad was green camouflage, the other was neon orange and white. If you know anything about this incident or you recognize the quads in the picture, call police. Well, a man charged with murdering his girlfriend in New Britain is expected in court today. Police said 44-year-old Antoine Harris shot Sabrina Finch and two other people Saturday night. Police said it happened inside their apartment on North Street, but they haven't said what the motive was. The other victims are expected to survive. Now, the state police said these two men robbed a liquor store and they could use your help <laughs> finding them. Police said they went into Country Liquors in Hebron Sunday night and one of them pointed a gun at the clerk while the other stole high-end tequila. Police said they left in a sedan. Call the state police if you got any information as to who they 